Hello and welcome to Space Shark Teaches. I'm Sean from Space Shark Studios and I'm here to teach you GD Script in Godot 3.1. Let's get started. In this lesson, we're going to teach you how to make moving platforms so that you can make your levels a little bit more interesting. So to start with, we are going to add a kinematic body to stand in for our platform. Let's go ahead and move this down over here somewhere. We're going to name this Moving Platform and then Save Branch as a Scene in our Scenes folder. This is kind of standard at this point, so if you ever need to make a new scene that's going to be replicated or a new object that you're going to replicate, make a scene about it and you're good to go. So let's go into here. First off, we probably want this to be back at the center. I shouldn't have moved it. Um, the origin. And now we are going to add an animated sprite. So I have added some more sprites to um, the description of the video for the moving platform because it's always good to have different sprites or different indication indications of what is going to be moving what is stationary stuff like that unless you're making one of those trap games where the whole point is to not let the player know what's going to happen next so we're going to go ahead and add these in let's make sure that they blink slowly expand that out and then control D to make a couple of duplicates so it's not too short. And then finally, add a collision shape. Remember, add a new rectangle and then stretch it out. And now we have our platform, all right? Just go ahead and select all these, holding shift, press play, and now they're blinking as you'd expect. If you press play, you can't see it. So let's go ahead and drag this back into the frame. So here's our new platform and it's sitting there blinking like it should. So now that that is out of the way, it's time to get scripting because we want this thing to move. Now there are a couple different ways you can make it move. I'm going to be teaching you how to do it with script because It'll let you know kind of how things happen under the hood as well as a little bit easier for you to control. So we're going to make a new GD script and we are going to put it in the scripts folder like the rest of them. And once we have that script made, we are going to be adding a few uh, variables. So the first one is going to be the move speed and this is going to be basically how many cycles a second um, this thing will move. So let's start that at 2.0. And we're going to also have move distance. Start that at 50. Export var move direction. So that's going to be the direction that we're moving. So remember, down is positive y, right is positive x. And that is going to be a vector 2. Let's just set that at 1, 1. Next one is not going to be an export. It is time since init, which is going to be 0. Now, you'll notice I'm doing dot zero dot zero that lets Godot know that this is a float not an int and that actually affects when you're filling these in so to look real quick if I change this to two and then I go in here and try to change this to say 0.5 it will not let me but if I change it to 2.0 then I can change it to 0.5 so if you ever run into a case where you're trying to make something a decimal point over in here, it is probably because it is not set up to accept that over here. 
So finally, we're going to be adding our origin, which is the origin position that we are at, or that we start at. Now, it is time to start initializing some of these variables. So, we need to make sure that time sense is set to zero when we start, and that origin is equal to the current position of the platform. So this will be this moving platforms nodes transforms position. After that's done, we need to do our handy dandy physics process. And we are now going to set our time since init to be equal to our time since init plus this delta. So delta is the time since the last time this function was run. And by adding that, we will get the time that is passed since this platform was created, which we're going to be using to find where along the path we should be. So I probably should have rotated these so they would have made more sense. If we do this one, if we look at something like this, this is a sine wave. So what this means is as time goes, it goes from zero to one, back to zero, to negative one, back to zero, and so on throughout time. And as time flows this way, all it does is change this direction or this distance from the origin that we are. So we're going to be using sine. We're going to be taking the speed at which we go. So you can see um, the faster the speed, the more cycles happen times pi because we're doing this in radians. So at two pi, we've hit one full cycle. If move speed is two, we've done two full cycles. And then the time since init, because this is what actually changes along this timeline. Then once all of that is over, we're going to multiply it by the move distance so we can tell exactly how far we've gone. Because by default, this goes between negative one and positive one. If we multiply it by our move distance, we can go between, uh, what is it, negative 50 and positive 50. So let's start by just getting our offset point, which is actually going to be um, position on curve. And that is going to be sine times our time since init times pi times move speed and pi is capital. So this is going to get the position on the curve. So which one of these points between zero and one we are at. Once we have that, we can make a variable called offset, which is going to be our move distance times our position on the curve. So that will get our overall offset from between negative 50 and positive 50. And we're going to multiply that by our move direction. So that will say, let's say uh, in this case, we have it from here is zero, zero. And let's say here is one, one. So it means we're going to move all the way down to, I guess this is actually 50, 50. So we're gonna move down to there, all the way back up to positive or negative 50, negative 50, and back and forth. So this will tell us the overall distance from this origin point we're at. And we use that to say our position is now our origin plus our offset, our offset. 
and we have a moving platform. Now we can go and change these values in the actual scene. Let's make it go slower and further. And now we can write a platform. And that was it. We now have a moving platform that we can put on our game to help block players or um, so either block players or get players across things, anything like that. But basically you can use this same logic to make anything. So if you want to make an elevator, if you want to make a door that goes up and down, um, those are all things that are now possible with this script or with the logic that you've learned how to use. And that is it for this lesson. In next lesson, we will be covering making coins. And then from that, or I guess making and collecting coins to add your score. And then after that, to make a UI so that you know what your score is when you're playing. And once you're done with that, you can basically just start making more level and share it with your friends. But we will see you in those next couple of lessons. Thank you for watching Space Shark Teaches. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel and remember to click the bell to always stay up to date. Please also join us on our Discord, linked in the comments, and check out our other videos if you ever want to see what else we've been up to. Thanks again for watching, and we can't wait to see what you make.